Yo, what is going on guys? Let's go ahead and break down this gun cluster offense. And this is an offense that I really enjoy playing with. It has a lot of really unique things that people are not used to defending. Um, and we have our bombs, right? We can bomb cover two, we can bomb cover three. Man coverage really is no answer. And um, yeah, like we're able to pick up pressure in a couple different unique ways that I'll get into as well. So let's go ahead and talk just generally about the play setups. And then at the end of the video, we'll get into the uh, ability to pick up pressure. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our audibles. For gun cluster, our audibles are going to be mesh post, outside zone, verticals, and PA read. Now for gun cluster halfback strong, it's going to be mesh post, 45 quick base, mesh, and Z spot. Now, first thing you want to know about this formation is it has one of the best plays in the entire game in Z spot shake. That is the play we're going to be coming out in every single time. Now, the thing you want to do is when you first get into this formation, you want to go ahead and utilize your sub packages by clicking left one time on the right analog stick. You'll see it puts four receivers into the game. And that's key because this allows us to do a lot of different things that, you know, kind of don't work well at a gun bunch while also still utilizing a lot of the same concepts that gun bunch has. So um, first and foremost, let's get into the play setups. And just to showcase this, I'm going to come out in cover four drop and we'll audible around from there. So first thing you need to know about this set is you have a fast receiver in this flat spot. And this flat goes up the field a lot quicker than your tr more traditional ones out of say gun bunch. So as you'll see, we'll go ahead, throw the flat. Like we get up the field really, really fast. That was one of these slower animations right there. And you saw we were still able to pick up a huge gain um, with just a simple flat pass. I mean, as you see, there's really not much delay between when you catch the ball and when you can cut up field. So if your opponent is one of those players that just blitzes crib and puts the outside guys in thirds or quarters or something like that, um, they're not going to be able to successfully do that consistently because for what normally would be a two-yard gain, now that flat pass is going to be a four, five, six, seven plus yard gain. Like it, it can really be crib shots against people that blitz heavy. So uh, definitely not something to sleep on. Now, the other thing you need to note is you have the ability with this play to go ahead and hit both the X corner and the RB corner against basically any zone in the entire game. Let me just go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. As you see right here, down pass lead to the left and the outside cover four couldn't play it. We'll do ahead. We'll go ahead and do the same thing to the right as you see right here, down and to the right, and the corner can't play it. Um, these corner routes are the best corner routes in the game. Um, for the main, the main reason behind that is the fact that, A, there's two of them. And unless you're in a cover two, you have no real shot at stopping them. No cover three or cover four is going to be any match for this defense or this offense. So basically, you're forced to go ahead and just let me throw these quick little bullet passes to the sideline, picking up 12 to 15 yards every rip. So when your opponent is those traditional cover three stock type players that don't make adjustments, you can run this play every single down. Like, it's that easy. Now, the setup that I go with my traditional base is going to be to max protect and in route the B receiver. I like this because the in route in combination with the corner dumbs out a lot of the linebackers and corners and as you'll see right here see how he got pressed a little bit and he bumped my in route um, it just makes the corner that much more wide open so let me go ahead I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in replay so right here you see the linebacker that is supposed to be guarding the flat he gets bumped by the in route which just makes the corner that much more open because no deep zone by the outside corner is going to make a play so right away, as you can see against a cover four, A, we have the flat pass that we can pick up. And I mean, there's potential to get 15 plus yards on that one. We got the corner, or if they manually chase the corner, you also have the in route coming right over the middle of the field. 
So you have three routes to the right that all are going to get open. And then you have the corner out to the left, which I've already shown you, gets open as well. So you are sending out four routes, and all four routes are going to take advantage of any sort of cover three or cover four zone. So it eliminates those two coverages that you can use. Now, let's go ahead and show you another way to abuse this. If you wanted to go ahead and recreate the play stick out of Gun Bunch, which is one of my favorite plays in the entire game, you can do so. And to do that... What you would want to do, streak the B receiver, block the running back, and now you're going to motion over this RB receiver and hike it before he sets. So you'll see we're going to motion him out, boom, and once again, easy little corner route, pick up 10 yards or so, and get out of bounds. This type of play is, in my opinion, what makes Gun Bunch out of West Coast the best Gun Bunch in the game. It's not all the other cool little plays that it has, it's the fact that it's the only playbook in the game that has stick. So the ability to recreate stick was one of the huge staples of my offense, which is this, um, when I was grinding the leaderboard for salary cap. And as you can see, like this, it's easy. Once again, everything that I do out of this offense is extremely easy. It's not very difficult to run at all. Um, the only thing that you got to pay attention to will be later on, and that's going to be how to block. So... Right there, you saw that we could attack it via the stick corner route. We also could not utilize motion and put the in route out there. And you're able to throw the corner route as you see like that. It's just dominant. And like I said, it doesn't matter what type of zones they're in. They could be here. We'll go ahead. We'll press. We'll put cloud flats out there. Um, it, Like I said, it, it really just does not matter. So you see, boom. Easy dot. I mean, you guys can see it's it's stupid easy. Now, that's against cover three and cover four. Against cover two is the only true downside because cover two will take away the corner routes um, unless you smart route them. And I don't like smart routing in general, mainly because that implies that, you know, you're on a first and ten or a second and ten. Like, you wouldn't be able to smart route this on a third and eight, for instance. And if you're really in trouble, say you're on a third and 15, you definitely don't want to do it. So, uh, I don't utilize that concept very often. I'll try to mix it in if I'm struggling, but for the most part, I'm going to do this right here. And this is my cover two beater. So, my cover two beater out of this, I want to streak Hardman, the A receiver. I want to flat the B receiver and fade the RB receiver. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're going to motion the RB receiver over and it's going to basically recreate what we were doing out of um, the previous play when we're throwing the corner route. But the difference is we're going to be able to throw the fade route to the right as you see right here. The safety basically is stuck in a pickle because he has to either go guard that fade or he has to give up the inside streak. So let me go ahead and just kind of show you in replay real quick how this works and what I'm talking about. So you see with the safety being in the middle of the field right here, the streak kind of freezes him. So I'm able to throw this bullet pass lead to the right. And you see, we're able to get a nice little rat catch over there. Now, what can happen if your opponent pass commits is they could play that if they pass commit. So what you would want to do, and let me go ahead and just you know show this. I can't really recreate it in practice mode, but what you'll see happen is this guy will get kind of a head start, and he'll be way over here to guard the fade. If that does happen... What's going to happen to your setup is the A will be wide open down the middle of the field. So let me just go ahead and show it to you. You'll see you're able to throw this right down the middle of the field, and it's because the free safety to the left is going to dumb out. So once again, I'm going to go back to instant replay. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with this. Now, I know I've got my homes lit up, but it, it doesn't matter. Like You can see the free safety is in no position to have any shot at making this play. 
Um, the strong safety, like I said, is going to be in a pickle. He's got to either guard the fade or he's going to guard the streak. It's going to be really difficult for them to guard both. Now, they could theoretically manually play that. So we do use other plays to attack cover two, and we'll get into those here in a second. But so far, from just this one play, I've shown you that you can kill cover three and cover four to where those can't even be ran against you. And then, to top it off, we're able to bomb cover two. So the only thing I haven't really talked about is man coverage. I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you. Uh, like, here's pinch buck O, for instance. Go ahead. You'll see right off, right off the bat, corner out gets wide open, flat gets wide open, the in route gets open. Um, once again, man coverage just isn't the move. So here's even against Tyreek Hill over here on this left-hand side with a manned-up guy. Um, you see, like, we were able to, we, to slow that down, but that's only because he has man-up. Let me go ahead and show you what happens if you throw it to a guy that doesn't have manned-up. Go ahead. This is with Pringle. As you see, Pringle's able to come down with it. And that's against Marcus Peters, who is significantly better than him. Um, so basically, if they don't have man up on their outside corner, they have no shot. Really as simple as that. So man's not an option. Um, basically, in my opinion, what your opponent has to do against this offense is they have to blitz. They have to blitz and force us to max protect and utilize motion blocking, which I'll get into. Um, if they let us go ahead and just throw the quick little dots that we have, they stand no shot. So let's go ahead and talk about one last thing, and that's going to be when I like to motion this slot receiver to the left. Now, it is key. When you are motioning inward, whether you're motioning A or RB to the inside, you cannot max protect. You have to manually block the running back by clicking on his icon and blocking him that way. If you do max protect, these two players will block, meaning that we can't utilize their routes. So one of the things that I really like to do is I like to streak the A receiver, hitch the B receiver, and then motion Watkins over to the left. That's going to give us this really good post route. And you'll see he'll clear every zone that there is, and we'll be able to throw that right there. So that is another setup that I use. But like I said, I wanted to talk about how you can't max protect first because if you max protect and try to motion, you'll set up your play. You'll go to motion this guy, and his post route's going to disappear. So now at that point, you're then motioning this guy back. You're resetting your play. You'll end up taking a delay game. And this is something that does take some getting used to because I know in most of my setups, I max protect right off the bat and just... I'm done with it. You can't do that again with this offense. So that is that play. Let's go ahead and talk about some others. Now, verticals is a really good play. Um, you guys already know verticals. If they're in man coverage, you'll be able to go ahead and set it up your more traditional way like this. The difference, I put RB on this route right here because that's going to be a wide open touchdown to the left with the motion, and also it will be a touchdown to the right via the wheel route. So man coverage basically doesn't really give you much option. Um, you see, I'm motion snapping him right past the outside receiver. He'll cut to the inside, and then on his break, he'll get wide open. Now, this actually is closer than it normally would because Earl Thomas actually bumps him and gives me what would be another touchdown right here, but more times than not, they're not going to bump into each other, and then this crossing route is just going to be wide open. So you have this crossing route going to the left. You've got the wheel route over here to the right. So those are pretty much your two reads. If pressure comes in, you have the drag route underneath. So once again, just to show you that setup, it is to drag X, block your running back, streak the tight end or the A receiver, and then you're going to motion snap RB right past this player right here. Now, this is against zone. As you can see, zone, it doesn't work that great, and especially not against cover four. Um, can it work? Yes, but I don't use that setup against a cover four um, just because it doesn't really get open consistently and there's better setups, and let me explain. So say I know my opponent's in a cover three or cover four or something like that, 
but they've been mixing up, you know, vertical, or they've been mixing in cover two. I can still utilize this wheel route. Um, the only difference is I would want to hitch both the X and the A receiver. And what's going to happen is this gives me A, two quick passes against any sort of a blitz. It's basically impossible to bait me between the X receiver and the A receiver. Um, but mainly what you're looking to hit is walk-ins, which is going to be on like a diving post. As you'll see right here. Actually, I got a terrible animation. Let me go ahead and do that again. So we're going to go ahead, go back to verticals. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and motion this guy out slightly. Boom. You can throw it to the post. That was technically to the post, but the hitch decided to go up and grab it. Uh, mainly because practice mode doesn't like me. So here we're going to cover three. As you can see, you can throw basically right over the top of the linebackers. Um, once again, traditionally you want to use this against your cover twos or your man coverages, but you can use it against uh, cover three if you wanted to, cover four if you wanted to. It's just not the best play. Um, next play we're going to talk about is going to be mesh post. Mesh post is another one of those setups that I use where I can still have a wheel route. So say that my opponent is in man coverage, like pinch buck O. I can utilize the dual hitches with the post over the middle while also still having the wheel route, which basically gives me uh, a couple different routes that can get open. Now, because they're switching off assignments, um, it's really kind of being difficult in terms of showing the wheel, but that wheel route will get open. Let me go ahead. I'm going to try to do it again. Uh, it might be one of those things where practice mode is just not feeling it. So here we go. See, boom. Yeah, once again, didn't work. Um, Watkins might not actually have the route running threshold to pop on that route. I do believe it is on all Madden 85 and on all pro, it is 90 route running deep um, or medium. It depends who you ask. Um, but that's typically the threshold for making that route work. Uh, the main thing you're looking to hit, though, is the post route going over the middle of the field um, or the two hitches underneath. The other thing I like to do, if I know my opponent's mixing in a lot of zone, is I will put Watkins on an out route and motion him out. So now I have the hitch on underneath, the post over the middle, and the out route to the outside, which once again forces my opponent into those cover two defenses. I want my opponent in cover two because then I can bomb it and I can take advantage of it. If they're going to sit in your cover threes, your cover fours, your man coverage, like you really never have to leave um, the first play. Like you never really have to leave it. Mesh post is good. You can kind of freestyle with it if you want. You know, you can go dual, dual drags and a streak. Um, so you could do something like this, where you've got two drags underneath, you've got the streak taking the safety deep, opening up the post over the middle of the field. Um, you got a lot of options with mesh post. Um, pretty much that is it in that sense. Uh, now, I do use PA read. PA read is good for when you are um, trying to hit a route to the wide side of the field. So let me go ahead and kind of explain this a little bit better. I would, in this case, flip my play because I want the crossing route ran by Hill to be the route that is going to the wide side of the field. I'm going to be utilizing a slant motion concept to, you know, basically attack the opposite side of the field. And I'm going to flat route the outside receiver. So just to show you how this will work, we're going to have the motion slant underneath that we can hit. That's a very simple concept. Forces our opponent's user to basically be at the line of scrimmage. Um, but the other thing that you're really looking to hit with this is you're looking to, as I mentioned here, looking to hit that deep cross. And you do have to put the flat pass or the flat zone out there. That way the purple won't go and play it. The deep zone won't be able to make a play on it. It's too short of a crosser. Um, 
and the flat holds the linebackers down, whether they're in clouds or hard flats, obviously, curl flats, as you just saw, seam flats. They all get held down by that flat. So it's one of those things where your opponent has to guard the motion slant to one side, the crosser to the opposite side. It's extremely difficult to guard. Um, the other reason that this is good is because it has essentially your max protect blocking, right? You have the delay route to the right, you're blocking the running back by default, and then you're utilizing the concept. Um, but that is the only setup that I use for this. Um, so there's that. The outside zone, let's go ahead and talk about this real quick because the run is actually pretty good. Um, you'll see when we motion this slot guy to the outside, and keep in mind, I'm the Chiefs going against the Ravens, so I'm not going to get probably a good run to even show you here, but I just want you to see how everything reacts. You see how the outside guy goes and basically changes all of the assignments. So let me just show you via instant replay. So by us motioning him over and hiking the ball, instead of this guy just get, getting lost, he basically sprints towards the outside corner. And this is key if our opponent's in cover too, because typically what people will do is they will come out and they will put their um, outside corner in like a base aligned pressed look because he's going to shoot in on any sort of a run. And when they do that, it's very difficult to get that outside corner blocked. So say they were in this pinch dog to press, you know, their base aligned press, something like this, right? They're blitzing. We'll just say they're blitzing crib, right? So it would look very similar to this. Now, typically against an outside run, that corner on the outside right would just come in free. But because of the fact that we can motion Hardman outside right there, you'll see he'll go pick him up. And basically, as long as the defensive end doesn't shed, that could be a crib shot. Like I said, I'm not getting the results in practice mode, mainly because I'm the Chiefs. But, I mean, you can see there's a wide open hole to take this right off tackle right here. And that's even with my blocker getting instantly shedded, right? So um, definitely a good run. I highly recommend you mix that in. Now let's go ahead and talk about Gun Cluster. Now Gun Cluster is a set that I don't utilize a ton of, but I do utilize it to bomb certain coverages, mainly palms, cover four palms, and cover three. So one of the things I really like to do is if I catch my opponent in cover three, what I'll do is I'll audible over to the play Z spot. Now Z spot is really good because I can go ahead and I can roll out to the right like this. And what you'll see happen is we're gonna dumb out the corner and be able to throw over the top for what is essentially a one play touchdown. Now, yes, I know that's Tyreek Hill, but that's also Earl Thomas who is zoned out. So you guys can see even against great safeties like that, you're able to pick it up. Now, if you wanted to, you know, have other routes out there, you could, right? You could go ahead and do a motion flat concept to where you're slanting the B receiver. You're going to go ahead and motion him over. And now you've got the flat slant going to the opposite side of the field, which will get open. So you can kind of just play it how you see, right? You're able to attack both sides of the field. Boom. We cut block him. We have B open, we roll out, we have the touchdown over here to the right as well. So Z-Spot, really good cover three bomb. Good against your traditional blitzes because we have the ability to essentially max protect to both directions, right? So we could, you know, instantly roll right because we've got the two blockers over here when we motion block uh, A. Or we could motion him all the way across and have your more traditional max protect type of blocking. So definitely something that I really like to mix in, especially when I'm trying to bomb people. Now, mesh post and mesh. Both of these are good. I'm going to show you the traditional setups that I use really quick, and then I'm going to show you how these work in terms of being bombs against cover four palms, which is the main reason I go to them. So first off, we're going to go with mesh post. Now, mesh post is really good because of the fact I can go ahead and do this concept right here where I've got two hitches, a flat, a wheel, and a uh, post route going over the middle of the field. Now, 
I will say this. I do not like the wheel route by the running back right here. I will re-wheel route him um, if I want to throw this. So you'll see right here. You got boom. He cuts up the field. You can throw that with ease. So if that is something you're looking to hit, you can do so. Now, the other thing that you want to pay attention to is the fact that you're going to be able to throw this post route over the middle of the field against every single coverage that there is in the game, right? So you'll see right here, boom, you're going to have the inside position on that guy as well. And once again, that's some dude named Pringle. So say they're in cover three, right? Same concept, same principle is going to apply. We can block the running back. We can go dual hitches if we wanted to. We could even block like this, right? There's the hitch, or there is the uh, route over the middle. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and do it again. Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to abuse the, um, what do you call it? You're trying to abuse the uh, post route. Here's another setup that I use. I go with the slant flat combination with the drag underneath. So I'll motion this guy out. I've got the drag open quick. You've got the slant that fits in nicely between the zones on the backside right there. So just to show that one more time, and then I'm going to get into mesh. So you can block the running back. You can slant X. You can put the A on a slant or a drag if you want. RB would go on a flat, and you're going to motion the flat out and hike it like that. What this does is it opens up a huge um, alley for you to throw the slant going back to the right side of the field. So let me go ahead and show that to you, just so you guys can see it again. Now, you see right here I had the dual slants, so if I would have waited, that would have been open. I have this one, which is absolutely wide open right here for the low ball, and if they really don't even need a low ball, this one. But if they manually play that, then it's going to leave the post over here open. So there's too many routes for them to guard, all of them being quick dots. Really like that setup. Now, um, the last thing that we'll talk about, we'll go with the drag out route combination right here. Um, or excuse me, we'll go with the hitch and out route combo. So it'll look like this. What I'm doing is I've got RB on a hitch, I've got A on an out route, we're gonna motion A to the outside. And what this does is it basically leaves that hitch route open against every single coverage in the game. Everything's gonna drop back with the post initially, leaving that open. Now, um, the backside route that you would be able to hit is kind of up to you. You can put him on a streak or you can put him on a hitch. Um, I don't necessarily think either of them are bad options. As you can see right here, you can have the dual hitch routes, you have the out route, but like I said, mainly you're looking to hit the hitches. If they mainly play that, then you're gonna have the post, and if for whatever reason they don't have a flat zone to the right, you're able to throw the out route. Really nice little play design right there in my opinion. Now let's go ahead and talk mesh. So that's mesh uh, post, but I do utilize mesh as well. Mainly what I'm trying to do with mesh is I'm gonna motion over the B receiver, which is Pringle. I'm gonna motion him over, hike the ball right here. And I'm trying to hit the post route as it crosses over the field. As you see, nothing's gonna really guard that. It's not a cloud flat, curl flat, nothing's gonna play that post. But um, it does require a different motion, right? So there, there will be a tail to it, but it is definitely nice and I use it a lot when I'm running this. So the other thing is say your opponent is in those traditional cover twos, right? So if they're in cover two, you can go ahead and utilize this concept to where you are motioning this guy out and you're trying to roll out and hit that. Now, once again, this, this guy Pringle is not really good, so it kind of is limiting how good this can actually work. So let's go ahead and show this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, set it up right here. I'm not gonna go ahead and motion him, but as you can see, you've got a nice little high-low read 
to the right, you've got the corner route over the top, you got the out route um, as well. So that's mesh. Mainly, when I'm looking to use this play, though, I'm looking to attack via the corner route with the motion. This is another setup you can do, right? So you can use this setup right here. As you can see, that corner will also get beat these zones. So I've showed initially out of the play right here where you've got RB on the good corner, but mesh out of cluster halfback strong, now you've got the really good corner being ran by the B receiver. So you can utilize a concept like this, for instance, where you've got the um, streak motion corner or motion slant combination. But as you see, that route doesn't get matched in cover, th cover four, cover three. It, it doesn't get matched. It's just a really sharp corner. So that's mesh. I've broken down mesh post. I've broken down Z spot. Let's talk real quick about the run, and then I'll show you why I go to this set against uh, cover four palms. So quick base is a decent run. I'm not going to sit here and say it's great, but you can motion Watkins over to the left, and instead of dumbing out, like you see a lot of motions do, he actually reacts and just goes straight up the field. So you see, boom, he cuts up the field. So you're able to follow your um, blocker that pulls. You're essentially, you're creating a combination to where the edge guy is not going to come in free because we're going to be able to block him with Watkins, and we're just following the guy that pulls. So you see right here, boom, I'm picking up four or five yards, and that's no easy task with this Chiefs team against the Ravens. Um, so you can see there is, like I said, these aren't, you know, your stretch runs, but they, they, they're they serviceable. Definitely something to mix in. Um, this is the only motion that I will use, though. As you see right there, it got blown up. The DT just instantly blocks it. So, you know, I don't use this playbook to run the ball, but the runs are, they're decent. They're decent enough to where you can run them and your opponent will actually have to semi-respect them. So... Now that we've shown mesh post, mesh, z-spot, all that fun stuff, let's talk about uh, palms and man coverage. So palms is just one of the most annoying defenses that there is in the entire game. So let me find it right here, cover four palms. Now, traditionally what you want to do when you're running this is you want to go ahead and audible over to mesh post. Mesh post is pretty much my go-to. So if you see your opponent, and I'm actually on the wrong side to really be doing this, but what you want to do is you want to streak X, you want to block the running back, and you want to zig RB. So it's going to be this setup right here, and this is going to be against palms. So just to kind of show you how this will work, you'll be able to throw that route for a touchdown against palms. Um, they're going to have to like manually play it. As you saw right there, nobody really follows him over there. So if they press, then that's going to happen. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to do it one more time just to kind of show it to you. So here we go. Wait, what the? Oh, <laughs> might help if I audible to it. So here we go. We're set up, ready to go. Let him motion over on his auto motion. And as you see, once again... Easy little walk-in touchdown against cover four palms. So they have to respect that. That's a dominant route to go to in the red zone. Mainly, a lot of people like going to palms in the red zone. Um, a lot of other people will sit in cover two, which that will also beat. Let me go ahead and showcase that really quick. So here's Tampa two. I'm going to flip the play um, because I want to. I Traditionally, I want to run this to the wide side of the field or to where the motion is on the wide side of the field. So we're going to go ahead, motion him across. Now you will see, you can see he gets over the top of the guy. Now I threw it a bit late there and I got a diving catch out of the, you know, out of bounds, but the route's definitely there. So let me, I'll do it one more time. We'll do it to the short side here just to show that it can work to this side as well. But this is going to be great against palms. It's going to be great against cover two. Basically, it forces your opponent to start reacting to our users, which is really key in this scheme. So as you see right here, well, short side got bagged. Um, if 
if you can roll out, you're able to do that. Um, soft squats will play it a little bit different to where they won't actually drop back with it as well. But Tampa 2 to the short side, not ideal. Um, let's go ahead and show it to you against man, right? So there's a lot of people that like to run all these, you know, crazy man blitzes. So if we wanted to do that, or if we knew they were running it, say they're running mid blitz or something like that. Motion my cross. See, boom. You can throw that right there. And even though the safety was manned up on him, he's too far back to the point where you won't be able to just possession catch it. I mean, as you can see, like right off the bat, I'm able to just throw a bullet pass and possession catch, and I'm going to catch that 99% of the time. So man coverage has no real answer. I've shown you palms gets absolutely cooked. Here's two man under. So say they run a two man under. There's people that, for whatever reason, do this. Um, we'll go ahead, run it right here. And keep in mind, I'm not even throwing the post route, which you guys already know is dominant. But as you can see, that time, kind of got a bad throw, but the, the safety and corner that's, you know, guarding him is too far away from him, right? So, I mean, as you can see, you just throw a bullet pass and you're going to be able to catch this. That was, that was kind of a combination of a bad throw, maybe a little bit late on my part as well, but... Um, that's here nor there. So, showing you at bombs cover two, showing you at bombs palms, it beats ma uh, man coverage, match stands no real, no real hope. Um, and it's just really, it's really good because it forces their opponent, your opponent, to respect the motions. And we utilize motions a lot when we are blocking. So, say you wanted to, you know, mix it up to where you didn't want to deal with the, um, motion say they're they're in a cover two and they're just going to manually play the motion that's when you can go ahead and do something like this to the point where you roll out try to throw the corner to the opposite side so you see boom oh i was in cover four match so i actually missed my own read right there I'm getting tired this video is getting a little bit long so um as you saw though i mean that that Corner out in mesh will beat cover two. The motion kills palms and it beats cover two. So you kind of just got to, you got to get a feel for it. I utilize, like I said, I utilize this, you know, auto motion a lot in the red zone because people just don't expect it. And if my opponent thinks they're going to try to bag this like they would bag bunch with the cover four palms, that, that's not the answer. It's not going to work for them at all. Um, so that's really the mesh post mesh concepts. And the Z spot, right? So that's pretty much everything out of the cluster formation. So let's talk about blocking really quick. So blocking is one of those things that is pretty much mandatory in any offense. It's no different in cluster. A lot of people left cluster early in the year because they could not block blitzes. So to just showcase this, let's go ahead and run your traditional pinch buck go. We're even going to try to dumb it out by utilizing the Mills technique, which is to man up the tight end and let that, you know, work for him. So we've got A manned up. And like I said, you can use this in a couple different ways. You can go ahead and you can motion block the A receiver in, as you see like that. Now, I lagged right there. I don't know what the hell just happened. So let's go ahead and do that again. Here go ahead, set it up. We're going to max protect, motion him in. As you see, we pick it up. We can throw that corner out to that side. We can throw the corner out to the other side. We could slant in, drag, whatever we want to do with the B receiver. But when you utilize this motion, you'll see you want to hike pretty much once he gets to the tackle. And what happens is it essentially forces the O-line to react outside in. And as you'll see, you're able to pick up the guy that would be coming free on this right-hand side right here. Now, there will be times where the guy will come free off the left. Right there, our running back kind of took out two people, but that's only because our left tackle didn't block anybody. So that is one way. One way. You can utilize that quick little motion by 
A. You can also do the same thing by max protecting and then motioning him over and motioning him back across, right? So you're, you're essentially creating a max protect look this way. And when you do that, now you can utilize even more, you know, fun little tactics like the motioned out corner, right? So you could do this right here. Boom, everything's picked up. Easy little dot. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll just showcase that to you real quick. You see by motioning him back across, everybody is coming, um, but you've got the little slant. Everybody gets picked up with relative ease. Now, I don't actually believe I actually even set up the blitz right there, but since I did max protect, everybody came free besides one linebacker. So let's go ahead and do it again. Once again, we're just motioning him across. He blocks, we'll motion him back. And you can go ahead and do it like this to where he can set or you can leave him like that. But I mean, as you can see, right? Once again, we blitzed everybody. We're utilizing the mill ta Mills tactic to dumb out the tight end. But because we're essentially motioning the tight end, they can't dumb out our blocking scheme that way. So the only other thing that they would be able to do would be to either engage or try to dumb out the running back, right? So they would do something like this. They would man up the running back and they would try to block it this way. Once again, we can go ahead and motion them in. We can go ahead and motion them back across and we can let them set or we can simply hike the ball. doesn't really matter. You see, boom, hiked. We can go throw whatever we want. Um, it's one of the best blocking schemes in the game, but it's a little time consuming. The key to it is the fact that you have great routes, so you don't got to sit there and really make too many hot routes in terms of setting up your, your passing plays. Um, when I do run this in Mutt, I have Conductor. I, I think Conductor is huge with this scheme. Um, so like I use Josh Allen when I run this offense, just my personal opinion. So uh, that's how you would block it at a cluster. Um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, your more traditional blitzes, like your 146. So a lot of the times you'll see people run their 146 to where they will mix up which side they're blitzing off of, something like this, right? But if they do this, they're still going to be pretty damned if they do, damned if they don't, because... They're not able to dumb out our tight end, so we're able to block it that way, as you can see, right? So we're throwing, you know, three routes out there, all of which are good, um, but we're able to, you know, block that. So say they were to do this setup right here, they would, we're even going to try to dumb out the running back, right? So they would do something like this. Go ahead, motion block him. You see, it doesn't work. Because we're utilizing the motions, um, the running back's not going to dumb out. It's kind of a, a neat little neat little trick that you don't really think about. Typically, the running back would dumb out, but he doesn't. Now, our left tackle is uh, dumb, but that's besides the point. As you see, we have all day, and we're, util we're blocking it to both sides with the exact same look. So... I've shown you the Mills Blitz. I've shown you uh, 146. We'll go ahead and just blitz everybody right here. So let's go ahead, blitz everybody. All right, so we've got everybody blitzing. Utilize the same tactic. as you see all day in the pocket. Um, trying to think just real quick what else we can really scroll through. Uh, we'll go the 236 Will, which is one of the main pass defenses. So the DB Fire. All right. Gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing. Motion these guys in, motion them back, blitz them. Now this one, this one may actually come in. Uh, there's not many things that pick this blitz up, honestly. But we'll go ahead and see how this works. Once again, I'm not sure how this one will work, but yeah, 
I mean, the, the line, the middle linebacker comes in free. So I have time to make a read. It's the way that I look at it. Um, but I'm not sliding. I'm not IDing. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just motion blocking this guy. Now, like I said, if you are struggling to be able to pick up some of these blitzes, say they're just in a blitz that, for whatever reason, you cannot pick up. I'm going to go ahead do the exact same thing right here. We're sending the seven, eight people, whatever it is. Um, but you can also utilize this concept right here to where you, you know, basically add an additional blocker. Now, right there, middle linebacker came in free. Nothing I could really do right there. Um, I'm also not trying to really roll up out of the pocket, which I can do rather easily. Let's go ahead and get this set up one more time. All right, so here we go. PA read. So say I wanted to roll out. I could do that and set up my routes to go that way. Or I could motion them all the way to the left and roll to that side, which is probably what you would do anyway when running this play. So let's go ahead. We're set up. We're good to go. I'm going to click off of Thomas. But PA read. You can go ahead and motion him over, act as an additional blocker on this left-hand side, roll out, and now do they guard, you know, the street? Do they guard the crosser? You know, what do they really guard? Um, so that's your super max protect type of blocking. The last thing would be to block out of cluster strong, which honestly is the same concept you're just max protecting motioning a guy over and hiking while he's in motion so as you can see like that's the way that you would block that it's very similar to the first set blocking setup i showed you um so yeah that's really it guys i know once again long video for a scheme breakdown but i wanted to go ahead and hit on all the notes that i felt like you needed um and i hope you guys enjoy it